Hey guys, welcome back, Arturo Fixers Automotive. Uh, we also have in the shop today uh, 2007 Chevy Tahoe. Uh, she tells me to check engine lights on, so I'd have her drop it off. So I figured I'd bring you guys along, see what we find, see what's causing the check engine light to come on, and we'll go from there. So let's go. All right, so we're inside the vehicle. So let's see what we got. 2007 Chevy Tahoe. So this is a 135,930 on the mileage. Um, she told me the check engine light was on. And then I noticed that once I drove it in here, this was completely dead. Oil pressure gauge was stuck at zero. Uh, so we'll see what we come up with here. So I got the, so I get some light in here. She got dark tinted windows. All right, so Chevrolet 2007, whoa. What are you doing? What's going on here? It's got to get all haywire. I mean, there for a second. Uh, let's see if I can maybe uh, throw some light on here. Let's see if that might help. Oh, that glare is not so bad. I don't know. Maybe it made it worse. Let's try that. Let's try that instead. All right, 07 Chevy Tahoe with the, with the 5.3 in it. Let's go to, uh, let's do a whole code scan. It's going to run through all the different modules. It's going to show us any codes that are stored in any of the modules. And it takes about 30 seconds or so. It's usually pretty quick. Alright, so we got uh, obviously 17 systems uh, detected. And it's got two engine codes. It's got a dryer, a door switch driver code. We're not worried about that. We just want to see what's going on with the check engine light. Man, what is up with this? Holy jeez. This thing is wigging out on me. Alright, so we got a P0521 and 523 oil pressure sensor performance, oil pressure circuit, high voltage. High voltage usually means that something's like unplugged or pack rat damaged or the wire's cut, broken wire. So we'll have to check the wire integrity. And then the oil pressure sensor performance is because it's probably just moving all over the place. So, um, I guess what we can do is we can just do a, a gauge sweep on the instrument cluster. Just make sure we have a proper working gauge. I know on some of the older Chevy trucks we had a lot of gauge uh, instrument cluster problems. So we'll go to functional test and we'll do a gauge sweep. Hopefully you guys can see all that. I know it's hard, but. So we'll bring it up here. So we'll do a gate sweep. I'll hit the button and now. So everything is going. It's gonna go back and everything's gonna go zero and then go back up to normal. So at least we know that the gauge here itself <laughs> works. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll go back. We'll look at some data for the oil pressure switch or pressure sensor the engine we'll go to display data engine data and we'll just try to find it here does that work a little better All right, so let's see if this thing keeps going crazy on me so we're looking for Engine oil pressure, right there. Engine oil pressure, sensor, PSI, and switch. So it's telling me right now that the pressure is reading 129.9 PSI and the engine's off. So obviously that's wrong. So we probably just have a bad sensor. And then the oil pressure switch is okay. So theoretically if I start it, this should, this should read. Let's see if I can bring up a, a graph for you. It might be a little easier. Okay, so, well, maybe not. It says 129. So, hold you right there. I'm going to start the truck. And that doesn't move at all. It stays at 129. Alright. Oil pressure gauge. 
stuck at zero. So obviously we know we have oil pressure in the motor because if we did it, this thing would be knocking and popping and ticking and all kinds of craziness. So obviously we know we have a good oil pump. So more than likely we just have a bad sensor. She's been driving like this for a while. And I guess the, the gauge kind of reads and kind of comes and goes and jumps all over the place. So we just probably have a bad a bad sensor. So let's let's check the wiring and let's let's go from there. So I got you guys set up on at least five threes on as far as 99 and I think even till now uh, even even with the five sevens and the 305s and also the oil pressure sensor on these motors are way in the back behind the intake manifold and when they switched over to this new style design from an 06 to an 07 they virtually made it almost impossible as as a matter of fact you look up the the repair procedures and it tells you to remove the intake off um, i've done this before and they are an absolute nightmare to get to but why it's so difficult to get to is because gm put a plastic shield on the back of the intake manifold and you, it would be nice if you can take the shield off, but you can't even get to the bolt that holds that shield on. So we, you know, you can fight around it, get around it. It's a big pain in the butt, and this will take you half hour, 45 minutes just to even fight to get it off. So uh, we're gonna pull this cover off, and then, and then I'll kind of show you where where it's at here. So you see this plastic cover here? That's what makes everything so difficult. And there's one bolt and obviously this 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 uh vacuum tube goes to, from the uh from the brake booster, comes around and plugs in. So you can you can actually take that off, that's not so difficult. But getting this getting this cover off is what's crazy. You can almost see it. You 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 can almost see it's on the other side of this and it's like like it's inward, it's just crazy, it's just so stupid. But that's where it's at, we're gonna get to it. I'm, I'm not looking forward to this. So one more thing, before we, I go back in there and take it off, I'm actually gonna unplug the uh, pigtail. We're gonna jump some wires and I'll have the diagram for you. And then as we jump wires, uh, as we give the five volt reference and the signal wire, uh, the five volt reference, as we jump the wires, the gauge inside, uh, should read it should obviously peg out and then the uh, the uh, the snap-on gauge should read something also so we're gonna do that now so. all right so before I take out that sensor I want to make sure that we have a good sec uh, uh, circuitry integrity so what I did here was I unplugged the little so I have the new sensor let me find it I don't know where it's at uh, anyway, so I got the new sensor that Connector right there. You can see I have a little jumper wire plugged in So essentially this is what I'm trying to do here. So you get to it's a three-pin connector Right and if you come down here, so it gives you the low the low the, the low reference the 5 volt reference and then the oil pressure signal uh, Signal wire so basically if you jump number two and number three together so number two and number three together on the scan tool right here, this should come up and, and down. And then since number two, number two wire is your five volt reference, you should get five volts showing up on, on, your, uh, on your test light or your voltmeter. So I'm gonna get you set up. All right, so this is what we're gonna do here. Ow, okay. So we're gonna jump two and three. Actually, I'm actually just gonna see if if number two, if number two has a five volt reference. Because if we don't have a five volt reference, then we have something else wrong. So before we go up, go turn that apart, we have to make sure that we have a five volt reference here. So all I do is I just kind of real lightly front probe that the front connector. I know you're not supposed to front probe it, but obviously you just be real careful. You can do it. You don't want to spread those pins apart. And what we'll do here is I have my so we're gonna we're gonna check we're gonna check it make sure we got five volts hopefully you can see that so we got 4.8 4, 5, 5 volts 
so that's good so then what we can do so we know that the wiring integrity from the ECM to this switch here is okay so then now we gotta do is we can jump again number two and number three we can jump them together and we're giving it all five volts 4.9 volts and this should peg out so we're just gonna again we're gonna front probe the number three pin and you should see it here uh, come up hopefully you guys can see that without the glare Let's see if I can so this is uh, where did we go okay PSI that's it right there hopefully you guys can see that so I'm gonna front probe that number three pin and right now and then so I went to 143.2 and if I take it out goes back to zero again plug it back in goes up take it out I down to zero okay all right so again guys we wanted to make sure that the wiring and, and all the and, and all the ECM everything reads before we go and chase that uh, sensor so again, we pulled up a diagram here so this is pretty much uh, the same for Cadillacs Chevy trucks GMC trucks uh, three quarter ton, 6.0s, 4.8s, 5.3s are pretty much all the same as long as you're the, the three wire uh, hookup for the oil pressure switch. So I want to find that pressure switch so I can show you guys. Alright, so this is the oil pressure switch. It's got three pins inside of it, and there's a little orifice tube. So this is what we're going to be replacing. Now you do need a special socket, uh, oil pressure sensor socket to get this off. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. You don't need it, but it makes it a lot easier. Let's go. All right, so again, oil pressure socket. It's just uh, something that just kind of fits right in there. Okay. And then, so we got the new one. So that took me probably about a good all right, 25 minutes. So I did kind of make it easier. I did disconnect the EVAP tube. I did disconnect the fuel line tube, just so it gives me a little extra room to get my hand behind there. And it just takes an extra couple, couple of seconds to pop those off. But again, you're trying to fight, trying to get this thing, trying to get it in there. So, but that's how regular, regular three eighths ratchet. I don't know, probably I don't know, eight inch or six inch maybe. I don't know, but uh, that's what I used. All right, so we got it all back together. We'll go and start it, see what happens. So now we're reading at, uh, you know, 42 PSI at an idle. Uh, let's rev it up real quick, see if it reacts. So there you go, you got a little blip, and she's good to go. Alright, so now that it's fixed, we're going to go ahead and just going to clear the codes. Everything should be cleared off. Everything's plugged back in. We'll just go to codes menu, display codes. No codes present. So we got another fixed one. So there you go guys, that's how you identify and fix a faulty oil pressure sensor switch on your newer uh, GMC Chevy trucks. Like I said, GMC Chevys, uh, you know, anything that's pretty much a three wire oil pressure sensor for GM that's pretty much all the same diagnostic procedure so hopefully you guys learned from this video hopefully you guys like it uh, you know click the subscribe button click the thumbs up notification that way you guys get notified every time I push a video out remember guys you keep breaking them I'll keep fixing them thanks for watching we'll catch you next time